Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is a special 4th of July edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast. Coming to you from the beautiful and historic neighborhood of Reedville and the equally beautiful and even more historical city of Boston, Massachusetts. We're celebrating this Independence Day holiday with uh, the author of a book that really celebrates what America is all about. The name of the book is I Campaign for Ice Cream and our guest is Suzanne Jacobs Lipshaw. Before we kick off our celebration, we want to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by The Adventures of Johnny Pocket Band, Battle of the Bands by Linda Phelps. Do you know a tween or a teen who struggles with stress and anxiety? If you answered yes, let me suggest a perfect fun summer read, The Adventures of Johnny Pocket Band by Linda Phelps. Johnny and his brother, Drummer Boy, are excited to compete in the Battle of the Bands. They have two months to get the band prepared, but everybody, well, they're like way nervous. Johnny has promised himself that he definitely will conquer his anxiety this year and start having some fun. And you know something? With the help of his friends, he just might make that happen. This story captures the emotions, fears, and excitement of the preteen years. It's a difficult time for all, but this story opens a window of understanding as each kid shares their thoughts about fitting in, making friends, and oh my goodness, that brand new feeling of being attracted to girls. This is a fantastic read for all families. The Adventures of Johnny Pocket Band, Battle of the Bands, is available on Amazon or on Linda's website, johnnypocket.net. The Adventures of Johnny Pocket Band, Battle of the Bands by Linda Phelps. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by author and military mom, Allison Paul Klackowitz. She is the author of the amazingly fun Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck. You know, every kid knows that mommies are the greatest. They feed us, they take care of us, and they love us with all of their hearts. But did you know that mommies are also so wicked cool? One little boy sure does. His mommy drives a big red monster truck, and it is awesome. It bounces and smashes and takes him on amazing adventures all over the country. In her truck, they can do anything. They can go anywhere. And best of all, they do it together. Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck by Allison Paul Clackwitz. It's available on Amazon. And last but not least, this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by The Nature Club, a series of nature-based books for middle-grade readers by author and wildlife biologist Rachel Mazur. The Nature Club is made up of a diverse group of five friends. Now, each book in the series tells the story of one of the kids and how they approach a challenge of growing up. And these challenges include moving, parents divorcing, and and health issues. Now, their stories run in parallel with the stories about wildlife and the challenges wildlife face, including migration, metamorphosis, and foraging for seasonal foods. Each book ends with the kids finding ways to take simple actions to help themselves and the wildlife they love. Readers learn about the natural history of birds, monarch butterflies, bears, raccoons, frogs, and bobcats. And at the end of each book, there are discussion questions and a section on additional information about the featured animal. It really is a great, fun read for families. For more information, you can find The Nature Club on Facebook or Instagram at The Nature Club Books or on the Internet at natureclubbooks.com. Joining us right now from Waterford in the lovely state of Michigan. I'm really excited. This is the perfect topic for a beautiful summer day. Our guest is the author of the brand new picture book, I Campaign for Ice Cream, A Boy's Quest for Ice Cream Trucks. Please welcome to the show, Suzanne Jacobs Lipshod. Suzanne, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Jed? I am really excited and really excited to hear the story behind I Uh, I campaign for ice cream because this is based on a true story, right? Yes. In fact, every single word in that book is true down to every last quote. So it is pure nonfiction. Wow. Okay. So tell us about, I guess we should first start. So so basically you were living in a town where they didn't allow ice cream trucks. Correct. 
That seems crazy to me. I can't imagine <laughs> that anybody. Well, um, and that's how my son Josh, who's the main character of the story, felt. He was at his brother's t-ball games, which were in another city, and he had been at cousins' homes that were in other cities, and ice cream trucks would come. Mm -hmm. And at one of his brother's t-ball games, he just looked at me, and when the ice cream truck showed up and said, this is great, but why don't we ever have it in our city? And I said, they're not allowed. I have no idea how I knew that. My husband and I were talking about that the other night. How did we know they weren't allowed, but we didn't know why? So, um, you know, the mom and the teacher and me said, why don't you call the township and find out? And that's what he did. They told him it was an antiquated peddler's law from 1954. Explained to him what he could do to change the law. I said, you interested in doing this? He said, yes. I said, okay, let's do it. Now, how old was your son at this time? He was nine years old. Nine years old. And so take us through the process. Did he, did he have to uh, get a petition drive going? Yeah, it was quite a process. It actually turned out to be a lot longer than he had expected. Actually, any of us had expected. So uh, the first thing they suggested he did was to uh, get petition signatures. They didn't give him a minimum amount, um, but that's what she, the woman we spoke to suggested, as well as writing a letter to the township board asking to speak at one of their meetings. So he gathered up a bunch of his friends, printed off petitions, and they went door to door, you know, split up amongst their neighborhoods and got a whole bunch of signatures. Josh compiled them together, wrote a letter to the township and mailed it all out and just waited for a response. And he was put on the agenda a few weeks later. That's amazing. That's amazing. I, well, I guess that, that, you know, we have to know, are there any villains in the story with, with any people opposing? <laughs> the board was super nice and really um, kind to a nine-year-old, but they had a lot of concerns. And one board member in particular just kept speaking out against it. He was the only one who voted no. Um, but I have to say there were three different votes. And he only voted no on one of the votes. He didn't vote no on the final vote. So in the end, I guess there were no villains. So, and everybody ended up being supportive. So I, I, I know folks are, are listening and they, you know, okay, there was an antiquated law. Uh, but what was, what was the, 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 the objection to, I, I, other than it gets annoying listening to that song that they play? <laughs> on the well, and that was a big one. And so, you know, the first meeting that Josh spoke at, they went through a lot of safety concerns. They were concerned about kids running into the streets. Mm -hmm. They were concerned about, you know, getting proper licensing, not knowing who's actually coming into the neighborhood. What is their driving record? What is their background? Do they have any um, criminal record we need to know about? Uh, that kind of thing. So they just were bringing up lots and lots of issues that their lawyer was actually writing down and things that he would put into the law to make sure that everything that was safe was covered. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that Josh agreed to do was to start either a poster campaign to let people, kids know about how to be safe around ice cream trucks or he volunteered, and this is what he ended up doing. They had a West Bloomfield bike safety day. And so Josh and I set up a booth on ice cream safety. And so when kids came, we talked about, you know, safety with the ice cream trucks. Um, when Josh got the copy of the law after the first meeting, it was a proposed draft. And he read that they weren't going to allow bells, chimes, or music. And Josh was like, no way. Half the fun for a kid is hearing all of that. Plus, how would you even know if an ice cream truck is coming? Mm -hmm. So he went back to the drawing board, wrote another speech, spoke at the second meeting, talked about the bells, chimes, and music, and he worked hard. And then they finally agreed to allow the bells, chimes, and music. They were going to try to specify a decibel level, but I don't think that ever happened. I, um, and that was the third meeting after that. Uh -huh. uh, it was a process. That it's uh, now. Did Josh ever get discouraged, or, or what did he do to keep himself 
uh, active and not get discouraged? Well, initially, after the first meeting, they took a vote and they voted to draft the ordinance. But Josh thought that meant that he won. And so he was really excited. And because there were a ton of kids in the audience, Josh had actually passed out flyers to a lot of friends and families in the neighborhood to get support there. Um, one of the board members was really kind and put it in kid-friendly words because, trust me, a lot of the words that were used mm. were not kid-friendly or adult-friendly during these meetings. Um, not as fact being bad words, but just difficult words to understand, way above a kid's head. I, I um, think but I, anyway, way above a, a, a lot of people, a lot of adults' heads who don't have a degree in law. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we're just kind of going, hmm, what are they talking about? Indemnification. I, I had to look that up, you mm-hmm. know, afterwards. No clue what it was. Um, <laughs> anyway, so they, the trustee explained that that was just a, a vote to say that, yes, we will allow our lawyer to draft this law. So there were still two more meetings. So Josh was discouraged after that because he didn't expect us to keep on going. Um, But fortunately, there was a huge media blitz with this. Um, I was really concerned that this was not going to pass, that the board was going to be stuffy and there's just no way they were going to pass this. And I thought, well, the least that could happen is my kid could could get his picture of the paper. (laughs) So I called two local newspapers who came out to interview him, and then it went crazy. Jed, you wouldn't believe it. We heard from... Newspapers, TV stations from all over, not just Michigan. We started hearing from other states. Friends of ours were calling us, telling us they heard Josh's name on the radio in Las Vegas and California. People were bringing back newspaper articles from other states. So it became this big media blitz. And I think that just kept Josh going because people were so excited. And we would watch newscast where all the newscasters and anchors were going, you go, Josh. What do you mean they need two more meetings to talk about ice cream? And well, th- this it, is, it was crazy. This is incredible. What a, what, what a great learning experience for your son and, and, and for you. Oh, yeah, and his little brother who was involved in it, too. Uh, it went beyond the initial thought that I had is, okay, he's going to learn you know, some things about the civic process and he's going to get some public speaking experience. And this is all going to be great for my kid. And, you know, either he'll be celebrating or he's going to learn to handle disappointment. And that's a lesson, too. Mm-hmm. But to have this media blitz, we he learned so much about the media. Um, back then, there was no term of fake news. But what he did learn is that the media doesn't always get everything correct. And there were several articles that had mistakes in it. Mm-hmm. There was a newscast where he was interviewed, literally talked to by the newscaster, uh, the reporter. And then on the actual newscast, they showed a completely different person with Josh's name underneath it. It was <laughs> another boy that got up to talk for ice cream cups. <laughs> What's yeah, well, I, I I had a very similar experience when I started my career doing educational magic shows, and and quickly learned that a lot of reporters come in, um, uh, either not knowing anything about what you what you're about mm-hmm. and just being completely blind, or coming in with an agenda, and not really wanting to get the story, but rather they just wanted to get video of uh, me agreeing and supporting their agenda. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> well, thankfully, the, the agendas were pretty close. <laughs> it was uh, <laughs> it was a very eye-opening experience. So what is it? Uh, now that the, the law has passed and you're enjoying ice cream, I'm, I, I guess I have to ask, were there any um, – were any 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 neighbors concerned about uh, you know the the ice cream and the high calories and all the sugar and everything coming in and you know and not having trucks selling fruit and earthy crunchy snacks? <laughs> well, if you think about it, this was uh, almost twenty years ago, okay. so people weren't so into the earthy crunchy snacks and over oh, still eating their sugar and all of that this time. So neighbors were really supportive. There were some community members that spoke out at the board meetings that weren't supportive of having the ice cream trucks. And um, 
but it seemed to be overwhelming in favor as far as community support. Everybody had them as kids, you know, the adults. They all remembered, you know, great times of gathering with friends and enjoying the ice cream. It pulls people outside. And, and we lived in an area that, unfortunately, people weren't outside as much as you would have hoped. Mm-hmm. And it did. It helped to bring people out and, and get more of that neighborly feel, which was wonderful. Yeah, that really is. <laughs> Now, what you mentioned that 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 this happened twenty years ago. So Josh is an adult. Um, is he into politics? You would have thought. In fact, uh, <laughs> one reporter said uh, that Josh could run for president. I think in two thousand twenty-eight, it might have been, which okay. is not that far off anymore. But sure sounded far off back in two thousand one. Uh, Josh is twenty-seven, and he's a space engineer living oh. in Colorado. Fantastic. So he has a better job than President of the United States. Uh, in my opinion, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm actually glad he didn't go into politics. <laughs> well, you know, we, we joke about it, but it's, it's, un, it's unfortunate that politics has become so ugly and, and so divisive. And, you know, uh, and it sounds in, in your story, you've, you know, you had – there was opposition, but people were able to express the opposition in a respectful way where folks were able to come up and, hey, yeah, ice cream trucks, it's great, but, you know, I don't want to listen to the noise. And and, and, and people were able to, you know, point out problems and and you found solution for problems so that everybody's opinion was respected. Uh, people worked together. And, and that's what that's what our country is supposed to be about, and uh, right. I'm, I'm afraid that we're moving away from that in, in too many ways. Uh, I completely agree with you, and that's part of what I hope this book shows is that um, people can make changes, and if you don't like how something is going, there are proper channels to go about and speak politely and work hard to get something changed. And I hope that this story, um, even though it's only about ice cream and, you know, they tell us as writers not to look at our reviews. And and thankfully, most of my reviews have been excellent. But there's a few people who were upset because the story was about a kid who wanted to change the ice cream truck law. Why didn't he go after something more socially important? Well, he was nine. <laughs> this was important to him. <laughs> but the the part they're missing is I hope this will encourage other kids and other adults, you know, kids of all ages, to work towards change. And it can be something as simple as ice cream, or it can definitely be something that's a lot more socially important. And we need a lot of that now. We need people who will advocate for things they believe in, but follow the proper channels and do it respectfully. Mm-hmm. And and this is a great, I, you know, I just love the idea of this book because it is a great way to get that conversation started in in families, just to help kids understand that that we do uh, we we do have listeners all across the world, but in most of the places where the show is is heard, there are ways for citizens to stand up and make changes in in respectful mm-hmm. ways and work together uh to to, to make changes absolutely yeah, i'm a teacher also and i've used this story for years to inspire my students to speak out when they have something that they don't agree with mm-hmm. and you know how to do it in a proper respectful way and that it's okay to you know, even disagree with the teacher, but there's a way that you go about presenting your views. Yeah, and and that you know, there there are so many lessons in this. You know, just as you just said, yes, sometimes people, well-meaning people, disagree. They're looking at an issue, they're looking at a problem, and they want it to be solved, but they believe that the solution they they don't agree on the solution, and that's okay because a lot of times when people sit down when 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 space engineers sit down and they're working on a problem, <laughs> they don't always agree, but they work together, and that's why we're able to get to the moon. Right, exactly. That's how you get a better solution. Mm-hmm. Um, you synergize, mm-hmm. and it be, um, I'm a big believer in the program called The Leader in Me, which is the uh, 
Setvin habits of highly effective people, but in the kids version. And we tell our kids all the time, when you synergize, when you plan together with somebody else and you work through those disagreements, you end up with a better solution that together than you ever each had separately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I love the idea of encouraging kids to become active in their communities, especially with their community leadership. Um, we, we live in the city of Boston and my son went to a, a, a great little small school and they encouraged this in probably right, right about when he was eight, nine, ten years old. And so he decided that he would write to the elected officials in the town, uh, in the city and, and, uh, ah. some, some responded, some responded with, uh, you know, staff emails sent, sent home, um, others didn't respond. Uh, our district attorney wrote a very, very kind um, uh, letter back to my son, and uh, and and he lived in the neighborhood, and uh, so he he had went to the school that my son attended. He sent this nice note to my son. He got really excited, and then my daughter, who was maybe six or seven at the time, wrote the district attorney a thank you letter for being so <laughs> kind to my son. And and he and again he wrote back and I actually ran into him one time and I said wow. hey you did this and he goes yeah and didn't your daughter write and I go yes and and it was just, oh my gosh it was just but it is and and today both of my kids understand that they are they they need to be part of the solution and 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 they're very very willing to let their voices be heard and to hear other voices too right right. So important. Yeah. Well, good for your kids. Yeah, well, I'm very proud of them, as you were proud of your son. Um, so any other I, – I, I know we talked about, you know, not reading your criticisms or your reviews, but, but were there any other um, reviews that kind of surprised you, any kind of negative things we can g- giggle about? Um, I think that was the biggest one was just the, the people who just felt, you know, that – ice cream wasn't important enough and Mm -hmm. I get where they were coming from in some respects, but in other respects, I guess I feel, you know, fortunate that for my son, that was maybe his biggest problem at the time, you Mm -hmm. know, and I guess I'm happy about that, but he's a kid. He was nine. It's ice cream. It's just what it is. And so I just laughed at it. Well, Let it go. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I guess my response would be: So, what important project are you working on and trying to change at the oh, moment? Good for you. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> uh, that's the city kid in me, always a little bit confrontational. <laughs> so, now that you've written uh, this book, I, I know you're working on some other projects. You, you, you have the writing bug now. Oh, absolutely! I've had the writing bug since I was probably Josh's age. In fact, I wrote a book when I was 11 that I sent to a publisher um, and got a very nice rejection letter back, back when you actually didn't email and you typed them out and you put it in an envelope and they sent it back to me with a really, really lovely, encouraging letter. And it was a dream I've always had. I was editor of my high school newspaper. Um, I was that kid who, when the teacher wanted you to write a two-page paper. I turned in a 12-page paper. So it was really just, you know, saying, okay, I'm actually going to sit down and do this. And uh, a few years ago, I made a New Year's resolution to make a concerted effort to find writing time and to go out and pursue my dream because if I didn't put forth that effort, it was just going to always be that a dream and never a reality. Fortunately, um, it became a reality. And yeah, so I am going to continue. I have three books in the works right now. That's fantastic. And and I'm so happy that that your family is is such a great role model. Your son is a great role model for kids and helping them understand that they can make a difference. And you're a great role model, too, and that uh, there are lots of people who are listening who have a dream, and um, you're showing them that they can make it happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Same thing. Perseverance and persistence. Yes, yes, yes. Tell us where folks can connect with you online. Uh, you can get me on Twitter at Suzanne Lipshaw. You can uh, go on my website, which is www.SuzanneJacobsLipshaw.com. 
And you can find my author page on Facebook, which is Suzanne Jacobs Lipshaw, author educator. Excellent, excellent. And you also have a website, right? Yeah, the website uh, was www.SuzanneJacobsLipshaw.com. Well, we definitely uh, encourage everyone to check out uh, I Can't Paint. I campaign for ice cream, a boy's quest for ice cream trucks, not only because it's summertime and everybody loves ice cream in the summertime. Actually, in New England, we love it in the wintertime, too. Um, <laughs> I love it anytime. <laughs> but also because it's a great reminder that we live, you know, we live in a time and in countries where we can make a difference in the world by standing up and being respectful of each other and working together. Absolutely. We've been speaking to the author, Suzanne Jacob Lipshaw. Suzanne, thank you so much for being part of our show. My pleasure. I really enjoyed it, Jed. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Marla Stahl. She'll be here to tell us about Grandma Charlotte's adventures. Hey, did you realize... What an adventure it would be when you decided to write your children's book. We have so many authors that listen to the show. And so many authors tell me that they had no idea when they were writing their children's book that the minute they handed it off to a publisher, whether it was a traditional publisher or an independent publisher, that they were switching hats. They were taking off their author's hat and placing on their marketing hat. That's right. Writing a children's book, that's just the first part of the job. Once your book is published, you become the marketing director for your children's book or for any book that you create, actually. So many of the authors that have been on the show and and so many authors who haven't been on the show have really felt that being part of our Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read program is a fantastic way to market their children's book. We've assembled a a, a team of evaluators. They're they're teachers, their parents, and their kids. And if they believe that your book is worthy of four or five out of five stars, your book becomes a certified great read. And with that certification comes a whole lot of tools that can help your book stand out from the crowd of books that are published every single week. It's a great way to help parents... When they see their book, it it helps let them know that your book is worthy of adding to their children's library. You can find out more by going to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Hey, it's time to say thank you. We want to thank Suzanne Jacobs Lipshaw. And we want to thank her son, too, for going out there and campaigning for ice cream. We want to thank our sponsors, uh, Linda Phelps, the author of Johnny Pocket Band, The Battle of the Band. We want to thank military mom and author Allison Paul Klackowitz. Make sure you check out Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck. And we want to thank the author of the Nature Club series, Rachel Mazur. Oh, of course, I want to thank my amazing producer, Fatima Khan. She does so much to, to help the show. Make sure you check out her blog at readingwithyourkids.com. I want to thank my amazing, beautiful wife for all the support that she gives me and the show. And, of course, I want to thank you. You are the re- – well, I was going to say you are the reason we do this podcast. And you are, but, but we really, we are doing this podcast for you and your family. Helping you and your family grow closer together. That is the reason we do this podcast. And you do that. You grow closer together every time you take the time to read with your kids. I'll be looking for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.